Okay, so the brainstem, it's a lot of information. It's going to be a, um, an, a material dump onto you. And so before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I want to give you an overview of what we're going to do. As we go through the brainstem, medulla, pons, we'll talk a little bit about the cerebellum, and then on to midbrain, we're going to keep track of just a few things. The first thing we're going to keep track of are the three pathways. And so if you recall, there's the, the lemniscal pathway, which takes information that is going to lead to the perception of touch, vibration, proprioception up. And, and last we saw it, it was traveling ipsilaterally in the spinal dorsal columns. When it reaches the, the medulla, it's going to synapse in the dorsal column nuclei. A, the dorsal column nucleus neuron is going to send an axon across. That, axon, that crossing axon has a name. And that uh, crossing axon is then going to come up through a tract that is called the medial lemniscus. Um, and then it's going to synapse in the uh, somatosensory thalamus and off, go which is in turn going to send a axon off to the somatosensory cortex. But what we're going to concentrate on here is the dorsal column nuclei. We're going to see the formation of the dorsal column nuclei, the formation of the medial lemniscus, and then we're going to, we're going to hand off this pathway to the thalamus. Okay, so this is, our, this is the piece of the lemniscal pathway that we're going to look at within the brainstem. Now, when we talk about the spinothalamic pathway, there's not much interesting going on here. All we're going to do is see that the, the information about pain and temperature is already present in the spinothalamic tract, which in the spinal cord is in the ventral lateral quadrant. It's going to continue forward, and we're just going to keep track of, of how it moves as we go forward through the medulla, pons, and midbrain. And then we'll hand it off again, to the somatosensory part of the thalamus. And finally, the, the, the same deal is true for the corticospinal tract. No synapse happens within the brainstem. We're simply going to keep track of where these corticospinal tract fibers are uh, as they descend through the, from the forebrain into the brainstem. They come down, and at the spinal medullary junction, we're going to see how they decussate, and we'll look at that. Now, there's a fourth pathway that we're going to add to this, and that is the brainstem version of the corticospinal tract. Corticospinal tract is going to control the um, movements, voluntary movements of the hands and the legs, the arms and the uh, arms and the legs. Uh, but there are other uh, skeletal muscles that are facial and or, uh, of the oral cavity. So, tongue, uh, upper airway, facial, and then there are a couple middle ear muscles. And all of those are controlled by motor neurons that sit within the brainstem. So, we are going to follow that tract, which is called the corticobulbar tract. The corticobulbar tract. Bulbar mean another word for brainstem. And so this is a, a this is a version of a corticospinal tract, but it's for it's the version of the corticospinal tract for the brainstem. Great. So we're going to follow those three plus one tracks, pathways, uh, and we're also going to look at the. Remember that the cranial nerves, which we talked about last time. Um, have nuclei within the brainstem. And so we are going to uh, make sure that we find those nuclei. Think about the facial nucleus, which has motor neurons that innervate the muscles of facial expression. As they go out the facial nerve, it doesn't matter whether you cut the facial nerve or you cut the facial or you damage the facial nucleus, you will get damage to your ability to make facial expressions. So we absolutely need to look at these cranial nerve nuclei, and we will do that. The, uh, there are a couple exceptions. There are some small nuclei, such as the salivatory nuclei, that we are going to ignore. So we're going to take, we're going to take a, 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 a bird's eye view of this. Okay. Now, there is an organizing principle. 
remember that in the spinal cord, dorsal is sensory, the alar plate, ventral is basal, the, the basal plate giving rise to motor function, and that as the spinal cord opens up into the brainstem, sensory becomes lateral and motor becomes medial. Well, there's a, if we can zoom in here, what you'll see is that there's a even more organization within the brainstem. And that gives you the, the uh, fact that, that, that depending on where you look in the brainstem, you can figure out what are the possible nuclei, cranial nerve nuclei, that could be present. So if you're looking on the midline, you could not be looking at a sensory cranial nerve nucleus. You couldn't, because sensory is always going to be lateral. And in this most medial part of, of the brainstem, you're looking at somatomotor. And there are only four possibilities for somatomotor, the ocular motor, the trochlear, the abducens, and the hypoglossal. And then just lateral to that, we have a, a, a pie slice where there's branchial motor. And there are only three versions, three uh, um, new cranial nerve nuclei that deal with branchial motor and so on. So this is a very useful organizing principle to understand where you are. If you learn this, then the, the possibilities of confusion are, are greatly diminished. OK, so let's use this to remind ourselves <clears throat> of, of um, where the different cranial nerves uh, exit. Um, so this is a, we're looking at the base of the brain stem. This is the thalamus up here. This is the thalamus. This is the most caudal. This is the ma these are the mammillary bodies. The most caud they form the caudal boundary of the thalamus. And this is the, these are the cerebral peduncles. This is the third nerve, third cranial nerve, oculomotor. Here's the pons. Here's the trigeminal nuclei, the trigeminal nerve, excuse me, the abducens, facial, uh, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and hypoglossal. And, and spinal accessory is going to come out down here. Uh, and as you recall, trochlear is going to come out from the dorsal side. So what you can see when you look at this is that the bulk of the, the cranial nerve business is back here. We've got 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. Whereas in pons, we really have, in dead pons, we have 5. And what we'll see is that 5 has a, has a nucleus that comes all the way down into the medulla. And up in midbrain, there's much less going on. So what we're going to do as we go through the brain, as we go through the brainstem from caudal to rostral, is we're going to spend as much time here in the medulla as we do up here in both pons and midbrain. Now, one final thing that is worth looking at is that this is, you see right here, there's a, there's a midline groove here in the spinal cord. And then there's a midline groove here in the brainstem. And between these midline grooves is a little blurring of the midline. This is the pyramidal decussation. Sometimes it looks just it, 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 this is its appearance, and sometimes what you see is just a jog of the line here. In any case, this, is, um, this marks the pyramidal decussation, also known as the motor decussation, and um, this marks also the foramen magnum. So back here is spinal cord, up here is brainstem. Okay, so as we go through the brainstem, what you're gonna, what you're gonna see is that this has is packed with diagnostic power. So we are going, as we go through the brainstem, we're going to think about it in terms of diagnostic power. We'll concentrate on those places that give us the, uh, the ability to figure out what is wrong uh, given somebody's symptoms. Great.